And a gold mine is a tiny place geographically that just produces one world-class performer after another. I started out in Ethiopia because it turns out that four gold winners in middle distance running at the latest Olympics in Beijing all come from the same village in Ethiopia with 30,000 inhabitants. 35 of the world's best 100 best female golfers all come from the same area around Seoul in South Korea. There's one Kenyan tribe that won all gold medals at the Olympics in 3,000 meter steeplechase. This is how the gold mine expedition looked like. So what can you learn from this? Because I mean, you're in business and this is sport. So today I made a bit of a list of some of the demands that a world-class athlete is facing. And if you just take a few moments to read through the list, I think I'm quite sure you will realize that is very close to the demands that you are facing in your job. Because this is not that much about golf or football. It's, it's mainly about the underlying mechanisms that drive high performance and a gold mine. I think we can learn a lot from that. And looking around the landscape in business as well as in sports, I believe that people typically do four mistakes. There are four misconceptions when they try to build high performance. First of all, they don't know what talent really is. Secondly, they don't know what to look for. They look for the wrong things when they identify talent. Thirdly, they underestimate the power of practice. And they have a looking good mindset. And that's what we think. When we look at something that's good, it could be an X factor, it could be in sports. It's very natural for people to lead that performance back to talent in a talent with the same automatism as we lead bacon back to pigs. Talent exists, but it exists everywhere. How do we spot a superstar who's not yet a superstar? It's easy to spot people when they're already superstars. But before, what should we look for? This guy, he knows a lot about that. His name is Stephen Francis and he's the head coach of the world's most successful athletic club, MVP Track and Field Club. Mr. Francis has two principles how to spot potential. The first principle is put hunger above skills. This is how it looks in Jamaica. I mean, I came out there in the morning. Uh, they train at six o'clock, I'm there half past five. And I look around and I say, it, it can't be here. The only thing I see is a big grass field. I think where the hill is the running track. Then I realize 10 minutes later, I'm not in the wrong place. I'm in the right place because we think that the best sprinters in the world trains in luxury fancy facilities. They don't. They, they train on a diesel scorched grass track and in the gym back from the Jane Fonda days. Then I ask Mr. Francis, why are you not building a proper running track? And then he says something interesting. He says the biggest mistake they do in the US and Europe when they build performance environments is to build these luxury, fancy facilities. Because a performance environment should not be designed for comfort, but for hard work. I need the necessary facilities to do the job, but then something that tests people on who wants it most. And it's interesting to discuss. I mean, should a performance environment be designed for comfort or for improvement? And how can we build mechanisms into an environment that tests people on what really drives them. If, the, if, if it's not talent, what is it then? That's the big question. These guys know a lot about that. His name is Anas Eriksson. He's the world's leading expert on expertise. He didn't find any examples of people who had such a big talent for what they did that they just went straight to the top without working hard. Neither he found anyone who worked hard, but didn't get much better. The decisive factor is who wants it most, who's willing to invest the most. To be an expert in your field, they think you don't become that with less than 10,000 hours of practice. That is the same as two hours and 44 minutes every day for 10 years. So why do they become good in playing football in Brazil? Because due to my calculations, a Brazilian boy 
could potentially reach his 10,000 hours at the age of 13, playing in the streets every day. A Swedish boy practicing three times a week would, would reach his 10,000 hours in his late 20s. So when we think we see talent, what we really see may be somebody who practiced 10,000 hours consciously or unconsciously in an early age. There's a big difference between looking good and getting better. And take that into organizations. This is a typical scheme in an organization. Top management says failure is not an option and human resource teams say they have to fail, they have to fail. What do they mean? Are, are they both right or who's right? Failure is an option, but fear is not. Because what is a winner really? What is a winner? A winner is a loser who has evaluated himself. So thank you very much for listening and all the best creating gold mines out there. Thank you.